Hello, everyone. We're going to wait until some more people start piling in. But welcome to our student ambassador webinar in engineering um, focused specifically. We have some questions that we'll answer at the end that you guys um, kind of had sent in earlier. And we also have slides for everyone that's in this um, webinar to present their specific fields in engineering. So thanks, Ariana, for moving the slides. Um, my name is Tahira Katten. I am a chemical engineering major in the class of 2021. So I'm a rising senior. And here's a little bit about chemical engineering and what I do on campus. So um, in high school, why did I choose engineering? Um, I had a love for chemistry, physics, and calculus. Those are my absolute favorite classes. Didn't really care that much about my writing classes and my drama classes. I was all STEM all the way. And during high school, I participated in two summer STEM programs. One was the MIT Online Science, Technology, and Engineering Community, also known as MOSTEC, which is a little label, the logo at the bottom. And then we took an astrophysics course with them. And I was also part of the National Student Leadership Conference in Amer at American University, where I did a biotechnology course. And I was also involved in chemistry club in high school. It was very fun. And I was introduced, introduced to the world of innovation, collaboration, and hands-on problem solving through all those programs. So I got to work with a lot of different people, some people who weren't um, interested in chemistry, but really interested in biology. So I got to see like why they chose to do the biotechnology program and why other people chose to do the astrophysics program that I was a part of. And all of those signs pointed to having a future in the engineering field. So chemical engineering at Rensselaer is really fun. Um, I'd say every major at RPI thinks that someone else's major is the hardest. Um, and I love chemical engineering, but I know a lot of other people on this webinar may not love it, but I think their majors are equally difficult. But um, as chemical engineers at Rensselaer, you will be in the Ricketts building, which is a little picture right there. I took that when I was still a senior in high school when I visited RPI. Um, and um, chemists take a lot of major specific courses starting your second um, year, so second year on campus, so sophomore year. Your first year, you're going to be taking the general calculus, chemistry, physics, and intro to engineering analysis classes with the other engineers. And then you start narrowing it down to materials, energy, and entropy balances, which is your first um, actual chemical engineering class. We have energy, entropy, and equilibrium, which is next up from that. During those two classes, there's one in the fall, one in the spring, both semesters, you'll be taking organic chemistry one and two. Um, difficult course for a lot of students, but if you are, if you're interested in organic chemistry and you really, um, really like what you're doing in chemistry, it's a lot of fun. And then we also have transport phenomena one and two, which come after energy entropy and equilibrium. Um, I took those during my summer art semester last summer and transport two in the fall. And those notes you guys see on the left side are from transport two, it says November. So those are from transport two um, notes and we were learning about forces within fluids. So lots of numbers that engineers, other engineers also use, not specific to chemical engineering. And then, I also took chemical process design and control, which is learning about um, different chemical systems, whether you should have a um, heating component somewhere, how many valves you need open at a different time, and make sure everything runs smoothly with that. And then senior year courses that I haven't taken yet are chemical reactor design, chemical engineering separations, and chemical process design, which is your chemical engineering um, capstone project. So your last semester, of senior year, you're going to be doing a nice big project with a lot of other, with all other chemical engineers on your team, designing a chemical process. I'm not exactly sure what it is yet because I haven't taken it, but I am definitely looking forward to all of those classes. And next, I'm going to pass it on to Luke. Oh, I forgot I had another slide. So I did participate in an internship this past semester. Um, I worked as a water resource management intern for. The city of Surprise, Arizona. I live in Arizona, so Surprise is a couple miles away from my house. And I got to complete my own cost analysis project for the plant's chlorine generation system. Um, my job was to collect data every single day for the react for the 
chlorine generator, which is a little screen you see with all the um, tubes and colors on it. That is a reactor that generates chlorine from salt water, and then you zap some electricity through it, and you end up with chlorine and hydrogen gas as the um, products of that reaction. So I had to see how much money the plant was spending on this system um, throughout the year and having a cost estimate whether or not they should keep using that system or go towards a um, buying manufactured chlorine from the um, from another producer. And I got to write a report, presented my findings to the department via WebEx, um, and I found that, that the chlorine, buying chlorine was cheaper if they got the price down um, than using the generator. And the picture in the back is also from the plant. I got to go out there every single day, take measurements, and learn about wastewater and water treatment um, from a lot of people, different people in the department. So now I'm going to pass it on to Luke. Who's next? All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Luke Chaplain. Uh, I am a, I actually just graduated. I'm a senior. I'm staying here for my co-terminal uh, program, which is um, fifth year master's. Um, so first of all, start off why I chose engineering. Um, in middle school and early high school, I was involved in a program called Destination Imagination. Uh, this program is, the way it works is you, each team receives a choice of challenges at the beginning of the school year, so October, November, and they work on this challenge until um, March, where there's a regional tournament, April, there's a state tournament, and then um, May, there's a global tournament in either Knoxville, Tennessee, or um, Kansas City, Missouri, a bunch of different places. So um, that program is a mix of kind of problem solving and performing arts, um, but I really love the problem solving aspect of it. So that kind of opened my um, mind to the idea of engineering. And then once I got fully into high school, particularly my junior and senior year, I took a bunch of AP math and science courses and I absolutely loved them. So I realized engineering was a great way to apply the skills I was learning in those types of classes to a more practical setting. Um, so that's ultimately why I chose engineering in general. Um, so in terms of mechanical engineering, um, I ended up choosing, actually, if you go back a slide, sorry, um, covering the next few points here. Um, the reason I chose mechanical engineering is I was actually on the fence. I started off as a biomedical engineer, um, but once I got into RPI, I took the courses computer-aided design and material science, and I love those two courses, particularly the mechanical aspect of the material science course. So that kind of swayed, swayed me towards mechanical a little bit more than biomedical. And what I realized too is that mechanical engineering is a great choice for many different industries. Um, as a mechanical engineer, I could still work in the biomedical industry. I could also work in a number of other fields, aerospace, nuclear, um, you name it. Um, they all need mechanical engineers. So it was a great way to uh, take a step in the right direction there. Um, all right, so now next slide. So at RPI, um, the mechanical engineering program here is excellent. Um, I've had, I've really enjoyed it. Um, particularly, what's nice about it is that there's about 200 to 300 students per grade. So that mean, makes it one of the biggest majors here on campus, um, second to only computer science. And I know that sounds like a big number that sounds kind of intimidating, um, but what that actually means is that there's a variety of different electives, uh, like technical electives, research projects, um, going on. So class sizes don't end up being that big just because there are so many options. Um, so that was that's a really good feature of this school. We have a good combination of small class sizes plus um, a lot of resources, accesses, access to resources in general. Um, and as kind of described in that red box there, there's a lot of different courses that are required to take for mechanical engineering. So you get a really solid background in pretty much any aspect of mechanical engineering you could potentially be working in in the future. So it's a great way to learn more about each discipline, if you will. Um, another really good aspect about RPI's program for mechanical engineering is that there's an emphasis on team projects and practical applications. So even when I've taken courses that seem to be almost entirely lecture-based, at the very least there's exam questions or homework problems that, that tie the concepts we're learning in class to a real world example. So that's been a really nice way to, for me to, to transition from an academic to someone going into industry in the future. Uh, next slide, please. So 
my experience here has been, um, I've had gained a lot of experience, obviously through my classes, but there have been two things kind of outside of class that I've participated in, um, given my background and interest. Uh, first of all is my research. Uh, when I was a sophomore here on campus, uh, I knew I wanted to get involved with research somehow. So what I did is I looked on RPI's website, found a professor who I thought was doing interesting things, and I sent her an email. I didn't have this professor for any classes. She didn't know of me. It was kind of a shot in the dark. But sure enough, next day she responds, and I'm in her lab like that. Um, I think what I've noticed is a lot of professors here really appreciate students that take initiative and are interested in what they're doing. So that alone was a good start for me to get into the lab. And even if they don't have open positions, they'll refer you to someone else who does, who does similar work. So research has been a big part of my experience here at RPI. Um, through, like I said, I'm kind of on the biomedical side of mechanical engineering. So my research is a lot of computational biofluid mechanics. I've modeled uh, blood flow through the left atrium of the heart. I've modeled airflow through the trachea. And what I'm working on recently, which is actually going into my master's thesis, is uh, blood, flow, blood flow through the coronary artery with and without uh, the stent and looking at how um, the artery itself compresses or expands with the stent. So a lot of those kind of computational mechanics, um, really cool stuff in my opinion. But one thing that's kind of interesting about this is it's very multidisciplinary. And that's what's nice about uh, RPS mechanical engineering program being so large. There's so many different opportunities that even if you are interested in something like me that's less traditional, uh, you'll have access to a research lab or a course in that particular field. And my particular research lab um, also works with the Albany Stratton VA Medical Center. So I've used a lot of their data. Um, I've, looked, I've used a lot of their CT scan data to segment uh, a 3D model of the particular biomedical system I'm looking at to then use that computer-aided model in these uh, computational fluid dynamic simulations. So again, a great, a great way to, another connection, I guess, um, that's being made there. Uh, another big part of my experience here was uh, a co-op I went on uh, last summer into the fall. Um, I brought in some AP credit, so I was still able to graduate on time. But that's the nice thing about the summer art, is even if you don't have AP credit, you can still get that six-month-long block um, to do a co-op. Um, my co-op was at Edwell Personal Care. I did a product design. I was on the product design team. So I did a lot of computer-aided design. Um, for razors and other uh, personal care items. And right now, currently, the models that I worked on are being plastic injection molded in sites in China and other sites around the US that Edwell owns. So it was a really great way to get some real world experience. And even though I don't have a full-time job yet, I'm staying for my master's, um, my co-op helped me a lot with my senior capstone design project. Um, I, for my project, I ended up working on a uh, teach pendant, so essentially a controller for large manufacturing robotics, and I was in charge of the casing. And the casing was all, it ultimately, in the long term, we wanted to design for it to be plastic injection molded, molding. Um, so I already knew a lot of these fundamentals. I already had practice with this type of computer design. So I was able to be a leader in my team. I ended up getting an A in the course. Um, so even before I got a job, my co-op has been, has shown to be worth it um, and great experience. So that's kind of an overview of my experience at the School of Engineering. I will turn it over to Kate now to uh, describe hers. Hi everyone, so my name is Kate and I am a current junior uh, right now at RPI. So I'm, I'm doing the ARCH program currently. So just why engineering? So similar to both Tahir and Luke, um, I loved AP science and math classes in high school, specifically physics, biology, and calculus. They were always more interesting than like the English and history classes for me. Uh, I wanted to make use of my problem solving skills. So that was kind of my key realization that I uh, was interested in engineering because I was um, really considering pre uh, doing pre-med and going you know, that route, but I kind of figured out that um, I really like more of the prob problem solving side of engineering better, and I'm very happy that I made that decision. Um, I have a dream of being involved in STEM and innovative technology, so um, technology is so important nowadays, and it, um, to be a part of that is just, um, I just wanted to, you know, have my career um, in STEM and technology. 
And I am a biomedical engineering major. So why biomedical engineering? Um, as I've said, I've always had an interest in medicine, but I always wanted to be on the technical side of it. So biomedical engineering kind of struck me as the perfect major for me. And I uh, applied as biomedical engineering and I still am biomedical, biomedical engineering right now as a junior. And I love it. Um, and because of its involvement in the healthcare industry, um, biomedical engineering is so important, um, you know, between vaccines or the medical devices you see, or even like hospital beds, like biomedical engineering, it's all involved in that. So um, that's why I just, was just really interested um, in that specific engineering. I was kind of uh, torn between mechanical and biomedical, but um, I'm really happy I stuck with biomedical. Um, and next slide, I'll kind of continue our, um, our biomedical engineering at RPI. So um, the coursework is super interesting. I've uh, already taken a bunch of these classes, but I'll just list them. So biomaterials, biomechanics, bioimaging, bioinstrumentation, cellular biology, and advanced systems physiology. So these are just some of the classes. Um, that are in biomedical engineering curriculum. Um, biomaterials, biomechanics, and bioimaging are three required courses you have to take before you kind of figure out what concentration you want as a biomedical engineering major. So I went toward the biomechanics route. Um, and actually it's pretty cool. They um, So we used to have only three concentrations for biomedical engineering. So it used to just be biomaterials, biomechanics, bioimaging. Um, but they actually recently, um, this year, they added medical devices and tissue engineering. So, um, and they even changed up uh, the curriculum a bit. So um, adding in courses like, I think you have to take Orgo now, um, which um, is really cool because their um, RPI is really adapting to what the industry wants. Um, so I personally chose biomechanics as my concentration um, because I do like the more mechanical side of uh, biomedical engineering. I'm actually really considering getting my master's in uh, mechanical engineering. Um, but yeah, after taking biomechanics, I, I love that course. And uh, biomedical engineering is really cool because you kind of get a dip in the pool of like every every kind of like topic. So like bioimaging and bioinstrumentation is kind of like electrical engineering. So if you choose that route, you're going to be taking similar classes like electrical engineering majors take like circuits and um, biomechanics, you're taking more classes similar to mechanical engineers, biomaterials, you're taking material science. So um, as a biomedical engineer, you kind of have to know a bit of everything, um, which is a pro and a con to the major, but I just knew myself that um, I was really interested in being involved in specifically healthcare, um, med medical devices, like being in that area. So um, the broad aspect of mechanical engineering was kind of a bit too much for me because I kind of was very, like, I am very specific with what I want to do um, in the future. Um, so that's why I chose biomedical engineering. But I advise if you're stuck between biomedical and mechanical, mechanical, as um, Luke has said, it does give you a more, um, a broad range of like industries you can work in in the future. Um, next slide. So um, my time here at RPI, I've actually gotten really involved in research. Um, so the research that I have been working on, um, so I'm a current junior right now, I'm doing the ARCH program. Um, so my sophomore year, this last semester, um, so starting in January, I, like Luke kind of said, um, you kind of just email professor and it's a shot in the dark, but it worked out. Um, so I do research in orthopedic biomechanics in the biomedical engineering department. Um, and the research works on innovative medical devices, which is what I'm really interested in. Um, and I'm currently working on a project dealing with a pressure sensor for acute compartment syndrome. So um, I love research. I'm so um, lucky that I got involved and I will definitely um, use my experience to, because um, because I want to look for a co-op for the spring after doing arch. So I know for sure that my research experience will help me with that because I've gotten a lot of experience with um, using CAD software. Like I use SolidWorks um, to design um, the medical devices that we work with um, in the research. So, um, so yeah, I definitely advise if you're at all interested in doing research, um, it's super easy to get 
in, involved. It's just shooting an email to the professor and searching up exactly what you want to do. Um, and yeah, and I, and I hope to um, get a co-op in the spring because right now I'm doing arch. And that's been my time at RPI so far as a biomedical engineering major. And I'm going to move on. Hi everyone, my name is Audrey Sandonato. Um, I just finished up my junior year at RPI and I'm studying mechanical engineering. Um, so first of all, why did I pick engineering? Well, honestly, in high school, I really struggled with what I wanted to do when I grew up. I had so many ideas. Um, I was really, so basically I had two sides of me. I was very into the STEM subjects. I excelled in the math and sciences, but then I also really loved creative creativity. I loved my art classes, things like that. You know, I went through phases where I thought I wanted to be an architect or maybe even a writer. I don't know. I was all over the place. But then I um, I had some engineers in my family and I sat down and spoke to them. And they told me, they were like, it's really a shame for you to um, waste your, your talents in the STEM subjects. Um, and you should really go into engineering because it's a great basis. You know, afterwards, you can do a lot of things with it. You can go into marketing. You don't have to stay an engineer. And I was like, you know what? That sounds like a good idea. And the more I learned about engineering, the more I realized how much I liked it. 